important is it to find your style as a leader um, or is there just a universal way that humans work with leadership? Yeah, we do a lot of profiling at Performance by Design. I think it's, and the reason we do it is understanding yourself and understanding your others. Okay, so that's really important to understand what your natural tendencies are. Yeah, because my leadership style is naturally, even if David, David Parkin and I coached in exactly the same era, yeah, he's a different person to me. You know, and he sees the world differently to I do. I do. So it's really important. Self-awareness as a leader is really important because you don't want people going, oh, that sounded like David Parkin talking. That didn't sound like Paul Rue. You know, or, mm. or for David Parkin, gee, that sounded like Paul Rue's talking. But I also think you've got to be clear that, that there's some certain things that you need to be good at to be a good leader. Empathy, authenticity, honesty, communication. So there's some non-negotiables as far as I'm concerned. Leadership is something you, you can work on and, and it's just having the awareness, whether it be like you said with performance by design, you have like a questionnaire, it sounds like, and, and you profile them and say, this is your, your strengths as a leader. This is some areas you need to work on. Um, and is it just a matter of actioning those areas you need to work on and then sharpening your strengths, like practicing? I think one of the biggest the problems, Jack, I think one of the biggest problems, Jack, is we just, we promote people because of technical expertise. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But we actually don't work on their leadership capability. My message to everyone listening, work on your leadership capabilities. What, what is authenticity? What is empathy? What is self-awareness? What is communication? What is honesty? You know, and because there's this notion once you get to a leadership position that you have to know everything. That's absolute crap. You know, mm. I met they were some of the best leaders and they've all got weaknesses. But what they're really good at is asking questions and saying, I don't know. I don't mm. know. Let me find that answer out. What have you been doing since coaching? Well, you know, um, I know Performance by Design is, is a business of yours. For those that aren't aware of um, your role there, what, what, yeah. what is Performance by Design and, and what do you do? Yeah, so there's four directors. You know, We got together about three or four years ago and we've got a number of, of staff as well. And really we, we work on that more from a corporate point of view. You know, what, what are your values? What are your behaviours? You know, I know a lot of companies have got the values on the wall but they don't really live them and breathe them. So we bring behaviours to life. I guess that's the best way to say it. We sort of identify what people, what's not taking them to where they want to go to and what, how they want to get there. So we really bring our behaviours to life. Yeah, we work a lot. We do a lot on profiling. We do a lot on connection, relationships. You know, so we really work with exec teams. We work with sporting clubs, but most of our work's in the corporate space. With culture and, like you said, like um, what, what do we reward and then what do we um, want to change in, in culture? When you see an action that um, isn't part of that culture, do you act on that straight away or is that something that's done more in a formal, if you have a weekly catch-up with that person, is that when you then would, would talk to them about that action and how you want to see that differently? How do you go about the communication side? Um, yeah. yeah, it's a good those. question because probably the hardest thing that corporate find is having those honest conversations. Whereas being involved in footy, and you would have seen it, Jack, is I don't talk about difficult conversations. I just talk about conversations because I've been in the footy yeah. environment for 40 years. You know, so we just we have formal and informal conversations at football clubs. But, but let's be really clear. It's a learned skill. So what we try and do at Performance by Design is create a really safe environment. We, we need to be really clear on what those behaviours are. So firstly, if you're not sure what they are, just ask a question. And how often do you think groups, um, so let's say with the football, you've got your medical, your conditioning, and then you've got your coaches, line coaches, so like little cohorts amongst a team. How often should they be catching up um, over a, in, in, for formal meetings, that is? Yeah, I mean, it's different environments. Obviously, footy clubs are really high, highly accountable, high meeting, you know, uh, habits, cadence is really similar every single week. So it's it's really important that whatever, those, whatever your meetings are, they've got to have a purpose. And probably yeah. one of the biggest differences I see in the, in the football world, the corporate world, often we have meetings for the meeting's sake. And it, it probably does happen at footy too, Jack, doesn't it? Sometimes it's meetings for the yeah. meeting's sake. So rather than answering that question directly, I'd probably say make sure you have a purpose for your meeting. Make sure you have an agenda in your meetings. And at the start of meetings, what we like to do at Performance by Design, just have some quick shout-outs. You know, do a gratitude, do a shout out where you're saying, look, does anyone want to reward some behavior this week? Yep, quickly, I'd just like to reward Jack. What he did yesterday was really good. 